morning. Welcome to church this morning as we worship God and bring Him all the, the glory. Uh, Call your attention to all the announcements in the bulletin. Please read through those. Uh, if you have a prayer request, there's cards on the table. Uh, if you'd write out the card, it'll be brought up uh, during the first hymn. So if you just would hold it up in the air, they'll bring it up to me so we can lift it up for the, uh, during the time of prayer. Uh, we give thanks that everyone is here and that the Holy Spirit was, is with us. So let's, let us enter into our time of worship. Our mission this month, uh, as we bring in extra money for, for missions, is the Pregnancy Center. So I'd like to uh, introduce Autumn as she comes forward from the Pregnancy Center and shares a few words. Then we have a video. Autumn? Hi. Good morning. My name is Autumn Yaki. I'm the Stewardship Specialist at the Pregnancy Center of Greater Toledo. Um, thank you so much for having me here today and for highlighting us as your mission partner for this month. Um, with rising costs and with shortages, your support is needed now more than ever. Um, I'm here to say thank you on behalf of the Pregnancy Center, but also on behalf of our clients. Um, I recently had the pleasure to interview one of our clients, Samantha, who came to us considering abortion. Uh, this is what Samantha said. Uh, I came to the pregnancy center because I found out I was pregnant and I was very lost and confused on what to do. I was on birth control, so this pregnancy was a huge surprise. I was scared on what was going to happen next. I felt so comforted going to the pregnancy center. I never thought I would be pregnant, but now I'm so happy to be my little one, to meet my little one. The pregnancy center definitely helped me in my final decision to carry. If I could thank the supporters of the Pregnancy Center, I would say thank you for the support and guidance when I needed it most. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so incredibly much uh, for impacting local women like Samantha. If you'd like to become a volunteer or join us for our first Friday open houses, please meet me in the back after service and I can give you some more information. Uh, without further ado, please enjoy our 2022 video explaining more about what we do and our other ministries at Soul Purpose and The Haven. Thank you so much. God bless. It is 
sanctity of human life. What does that mean? Here at the Pregnancy Center, there are days that after ultrasounds, we gather into the ultrasound room and we take a moment um, to look at the images and to pray, to pray for that mom, to pray for her partner, to pray for that child, and also to pause and to see what God has created and to call it good. And that is what the sanctity of all human life is, a recognition and, and a holy pause to say, God, you are the author of life and what you create is good. My name is Savannah Martin and I'm the executive director here at the Pregnancy Center of Greater Toledo. And as you've probably seen, the conversation and the landscape of the abortion issue is changing rapidly. So what does that mean for us? The good news is, is that it means that we're not waiting on anything to happen. We believe that the changing of laws that protect and value life is important. But friends, make no mistake. We are making abortion unthinkable every time we turn the lights on here at the Pregnancy Center. And we do this through three ways. The first way that we do that is here at our limited medical facility. We offer intake appointments, ultrasounds, parenting classes, and case management for men and women who are facing a pregnancy that they didn't plan on. But we know that coupled with the ability to see that life and, and being uh, coupled with practical resources and also the hope of the gospel, we are seeing more families choose life than ever before. We also, through our parenting classes, are connecting people to the local church and they're getting plugged in an intentional discipleship. We're making abortion unthinkable. The second way that we're doing that is through our services over at the Haven, our after abortion care program. And there we believe that Jesus is just as present at the back door of a facility as he is at the front door. Of course, we desire that no mother and father should ever have to make that decision. But we also know that Jesus stands ready with love and healing and forgiveness. And we don't want people to have to wait decades after an abortion to be reconciled back to Christ. We believe that it can be hours and days after. And so over at The Haven, we provide support group and connection appointments and a Bible-based recovery process that allows mothers and fathers to assign dignity and humanity to their child and also to receive the healing and the grace of Jesus Christ. The last way that we make abortion unthinkable in our community is through our sole purpose program. It's a national outreach to women on college campuses to raise them up in their value, worth, and identity in Christ. We know it's a bigger win for a college-aged woman to walk through the doors of a pregnancy center than an abortion facility. But the biggest win, the kingdom win, is if they never have to walk through either. So through Bible study and intentional discipleship, we are seeing women at a pivotal point in their life receiving Christ and being discipled. We do this in partnership with other pregnancy centers all across this nation. We are making abortion unthinkable. Perhaps as you hear all of this, you're stirred and you hear what's going on in our state and even our nation and you think, what can I do? Well, here at the Pregnancy Center, we believe in the power of prayer. And so friends, we are encouraging you to join us in praying, praying for our state, praying for our nation, praying for our center and pregnancy centers all across this nation, praying that we as the church are, are ready to receive these children and these mothers and these fathers into our bodies. We're asking you to join us in praying for those that work at the abortion facility, that they would understand a God who loves them Maybe you uh, have a, a tugging in your, in your heart to, to get more involved, and that's actually one of the biggest needs that we have right now. We are seeing a 15% increase in abortion-minded women walking through our doors right now. And we need people like you to be able to sit across from them and first offer them the hope of Jesus Christ, to connect them to tangible resources that will help make choosing life possible, we also need medical volunteers. We need class facilitators. I promise you, if you're feeling that tug in your heart, there's room for you in this ministry. And to start that process, it's really easy. You just need to go onto our website, friendsofpregnancycenter.org, click on the volunteer tab and fill out the application. And someone from our team will get a hold of you really soon. We look forward to doing this together with you. Friends, don't be discouraged. We know that we're ending abortion every single day in our community together.
moving story, a moving truth. I hope that we'll hear the call and be in ministry with the Pregnancy Center. Thank you, Laura. Would you join me in our opening prayer, and we'll go right into the call of worship. Spirit of wisdom and hope, we witness your glory in the heavens and hear your call to us. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of your compassionate care. Open our hearts this day to hear and respond in joy to your call, that we may serve you faithfully all our days. Amen. From the very whisper of creation, God poured forth love. In the fullness of time, God sent Jesus as a revelation of God's own self. When we thought all hope was lost, God offered us the Holy Spirit to heal and guide us. For the Trinity of Understanding, we sing praise. Please stand. Amen. We got there eventually. Please be seated. Good morning. 
This morning, we would like to recognize our graduates. We have two high school graduates and two college graduates. Our first high school graduate is Grace Hires. And I don't think Grace is here today, but hey, Renee. Um, Grace graduated from Anthony Wayne High School. She participated in the marching band, the concert band, and also art club. Grace was also an ambassador level Girl Scout, and she plans to attend Owens Community College to study art education. Jamel Lipinski was our next high school graduate, also graduating from Anthony Wayne, and also the Penta Career Center. And while at Penta, Jamel is focused on manufacturing engineering. Andrea is our um, first college graduate. Um, and Andrea, if you want to come up, we have a little gift for you. So congratulations. And she graduated with a um, bachelor's in music education. And she also recently got a job as the new middle school choir director at Pleasant Run Middle School. So congratulations for that, too. And Brock, if you want to come on up. Brock also graduated um, from Bowling Green University. He graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. And he also completed, congratulations, an internship with Congressman Jim Jordan in Washington, DC. And he's hoping to plan to return to DC um, later this year. So congratulations to all of our graduates. <laughs> And we do have um, some refreshments and things afterwards, so if you'd like to hang around after the service and chat with Andrea and Brock on their future plans, that would be great. Thanks again. If the children would join me. So how are you this morning? Did you brought your drawings up? Yeah. Oh, you made it for Miss Olga. You want to give it to her now? Okay, go ahead. Is this for me? Oh, thank you. Thank you both. One of the things that by giving gifts, and we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, is when someone receives a gift, hi, when someone re receives a gift, they feel good, and we feel good for giving it, don't we? And, and that's how God is doing for us. He's giving us gifts, and God feels good about that. And we can feel good about it, too. And one of those gifts is his promise to always be with us. So don't forget that God is always with you. Do you understand that? Now, sometimes it's really hard to feel that God is with us. What? Well, on mic. Splash day? Okay. So, thank you. So don't ever forget that God has given us the greatest gift, and that's his son. And that's how, he, that's how we know how much God loves us. So don't forget it. God loves you, and God is always with you. Because God is good, and he gives us the gifts that we need to live. Okay? So let's pray. And then those that are going back to your seats, go ahead. And those that are going to Sunday school can take off. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us good gifts. And you've given us the greatest gift of Jesus. So touch our children and touch each of us and remind us of the fullness of your love. And the gift of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. You have a question for me? Maggie, what's your question? No, uh, you don't know. Okay. Some other time you can ask. 
Well, you have a question? What's your question? Oh, you have it. Okay. So you can go back. You can go where you're supposed to. Are you supposed to go to Sunday school or back to your seat? Ah, mommy. There's another one. I, I'm not sure what to say after that. <laughs> Other than let us hear the word of God as we read today's scripture from the gospel of John chapter 16 verses 12 through 15. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. And let us give thanks for the truth of God's word. Amen.
please stand. <laughs> As we come to our prayer time, uh, we, in addition to what's printed in the bulletin, I have a couple prayer requests. One is Bobby Long. They haven't been able to be with us since uh, COVID, uh, but she's now been, is under hospice care. So we need to pray for Ben and Bobby. And also, uh, Pam and I, I'd like to pray, have you pray for uh, our son Stephen and his wife Sarah. Sarah's due today to have our next grandchild. So we give thanks for that. And uh, if Claire doesn't show up by Saturday, they're going to induce labor. So, you know, isn't it funny? Six months ago, we knew what this baby's name was going to be. And uh, so please remember all those that are that are the, our prayers for peace, for healing, for hope. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for being with us all the time. And Lord, we pray that we would seek your Holy Spirit to guide us in every decision we make. We especially pray for those that are struggling with health issues and, and rehab and, and waiting for procedures and for families that are still dealing with the loss of loved ones we ask that you would touch each one with your healing power. Make each one whole. We praise you. For we know that you desire for each and every one of us to know your presence. To know your peace. So we ask this morning that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and we would know that peace and your power that we might be your representatives here on earth, your faithful disciples. Lord, we lift up the Pregnancy Center and ask that you continue to bless their work. And Lord, to 
to touch each of the, the women that come through the doors, those that are seeking counsel, either as they find out that they're pregnant or those that have already gone through with an abortion and they find healing. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to bless them in mighty ways and use us to be a part of that blessing. We pray for all those that we know and the millions that we don't know in Ukraine. And Lord, we, we aren't even sure how to pray anymore other than we, we desire deeply peace. We desire that you protect the Ukrainian people. Lord, we pray that you would take control of the situation. And Lord, as we admit that we don't understand, we also know and confess that by faith, we know that you will work out your purposes in the midst of the war. So touch each person. And for those that don't know you, we pray that they would turn to you and find you in the midst of the chaos and the destruction and the loss of life. Thank you. As you hear our prayers and as we pray in the powerful name of Jesus and continue to pray as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue this series uh, on the Holy Spirit, there's a couple things that, that we need to touch base on from, from previous weeks. And one is just the basic nature or characteristics of the Holy Spirit from John chapter 14 and 16. We never, God says that the Holy Spirit, that his presence will never leave us, that the Holy Spirit will lead us into truth, that the world cannot find as they are not looking and, does, and don't recognize. The world just doesn't recognize the presence and power of God. The Holy Spirit will convince the world of sin and God's righteousness and the coming judgment. The world's sin is unbelief in Jesus. Now think of that. The one thing that God is most concerned about in people who do not know Jesus is for them to understand that they only have one sin to deal with, and that's not knowing Jesus Christ. Isn't that pretty startling? Because we think of all the things that are going on, but the most important point is that God wants to use us as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to help people find the freedom that can only be, be found in Jesus Christ, to find the peace that can only be found in Him. Now, there are several gifts of the Spirit. Last week, we touched on, on some of those. Uh, highlight for people that may not have been here. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues. And there's others. God desires to equip us. Now, from Romans chapter 12, verses 6 or 8. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So let, let's just pause there. The purpose of the gifting of the Holy Spirit is that we can do what God calls us to do and do it well. To do it with power. To do it with grace. To do it with humility. God wants to use us. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. So if God has gifted any one of us in telling the truth in the moment and the possible future that it holds, then do it with faith. Don't be afraid to speak when the Holy Spirit says speak. And there's the opposite side of that. We may have a specific gift and God may say, don't use it now. Don't we think that if we've got the gift that God wants us to use it all the time? 
We don't understand God's way of doing things, so we only need to use the gift when God directs us, not all the time. In fact, some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit will frighten people off. So we need to be sensitive to the presence of God and utilize the gifting that God has given us and the power that comes with that only when God asks us. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. Now, there's, when we come to teacher, there's two things that happens. One is we have those people that are called to teach in public and private schools. And they're great at it. That doesn't mean that same person is called to teach in the church. So how many times have we needed a different teacher in a Sunday school class and the first people we thought of were teachers in public school? Isn't that true? How many of you that teach in public schools have been asked to teach because you're a teacher in public schools? It's just, it's the normal thing to do. Actually, it's the convenient thing to do. And a few years ago, I learned this. If it's convenient, it's probably wrong. Think of it. How many times we've taken the easy path, it was a convenient path, and when we got to the end, we thought, why did I do that? Well, it's because it was the easiest thing to do. And when God calls us to serve and calls us to live by faith, it usually is not easy. That's why we have to live by faith. So we also have people that are gifted in teaching God's truth. In one situation and I'm aware of in a church that I served, one of the most gifted teachers of God's truth didn't even graduate from high school. Think of that. But God called that person to teach his word, his truth, and impacted generations, literally, because they were a third grade teacher the third grade Sunday school class. And people, persons after persons, remember her teaching because it was blessed by God and it was in power and grace. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Kind of simple, isn't it? Kind of straightforward. So if you have the gift of encouragement, do it. If your gift is to if if it is giving, give generously. Now when we hear the word give, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The offering. Well, the gift of giving is much more than just money. Now there are some people that God has purposely blessed in powerful ways so that they can support and provide through God's direction for the ministry of God's church. There's just, you know, it, it's, you can't even understand it. They give so generously. But also the giving of time, the giving of talents, the giving of whatever God has laid on our hearts to give, give generously. You know, there's some folks uh, here this morning that give more than anyone could ever ask, and they do it out of their nature and their trust in God. And I thank each and every one of you. So if the gift is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. How many of us the last thing we want to do when someone asks us is to lead something. Yet, if our gift is leadership, God's saying, I want you to lead. That's what I'm calling you to do. That's what your purpose is to be in this world. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. 
Now, there, over the years, there's been a couple people that really had this, this gift of kindness. And they, they gave and gave and gave. And, and on a couple occasions, they actually, we actually had conversations about being tired of being kind all the time. It was our gift. But like any of us, when we keep using it and pouring it out, it, it sometimes, oh God, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Or a situation in which someone didn't receive the kindness well. You ever been in that situation? Uh, I have many times when people want a particular thing, they ask for it, they're in need, and they didn't get exactly what they asked for. They're nice up until that moment, and then the niceness goes away, no matter how kind you might be. Because when people want something, when we want something, when each of us wants something, we want what we want when we want it. We don't like to mess with this thing that God says, it's not time yet. Or when we don't really hear from God in the midst of it. Or we ask an individual to help us with something and they just aren't available until three months from now. They're just too busy. What would God want us to do? Maybe what God would ask us to do is to take the time and be kind and caring for another instead of doing for ourselves. Just a suggestion. Isn't that what God would ask us to do? The gifts, when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are simply God empowering faithful Christians to do what He's called us to do. From 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are part of everything we need to accomplish God's plans for our lives. So in this, this passage that we've read, we find out that if we don't look for the Holy Spirit, we'll not find the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is saying this. There's so much I want to tell you. He's coming to the end of the teaching in the upper room. He's about to go out into the garden and pray. And then go deeper into the garden and was arrested so he's saying in, in these, these few chapters of the upper room, he's saying, I, I have a lot more to tell you. But you can't bear it. The same is true when we're discipling one another, when we're in studies, that there's, there's a point where all of us will reach a moment in which we just can't bear anymore. Our minds are full we we're processing different pieces. How many of us are individuals that when we hear something, we drift away from whatever comes next because we're still processing what we just heard? We're like that, aren't we? And it's okay. You know, I don't mind if you miss the next five minutes if you got something out of what you were hearing. You know, check out all you want as long as you're checking out with God. Allowing the Holy Spirit to teach and to guide Because we reach a moment in which we can only understand this much. So that's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. Then he goes on and says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So here's the promise. Here's the fact. That we can only bear so much at the moment, but when we truly engage in being taught by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach us at the rate that God intends, will only teach us what, it, what the Holy Spirit hears from Christ, and we'll grow closer to God in the process. 
So as we read scripture, there's many of us that try to read through the, the Bible in a year. It's a great exercise. But, uh, and it doesn't take that long. Reading out loud at about the pace that I'm talking right now, it only takes 72 hours to read through the Scripture. 72 hours isn't very long. So we can get into the Word, and as we read, and as we seek the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us the truth that we need in that moment. And there'll be other places we'll say to ourselves and and maybe even cry out to God and say, I don't understand this. And Jesus said, you can't bear anymore right now. It's okay. None of us are going to understand all of Scripture. But I know that we experience when we're in the Word, God's revelation in certain places that we need in that moment. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal to us the truth. We need to seek the Spirit to do that. The Holy Spirit will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. So one of the roles of the Holy Spirit will tell us what, is, what lies ahead in our lives. Now, here's the unfortunate piece. The Holy Spirit will, will reveal to us what lies ahead, but won't show us the whole path to get there. He'll show us one step at a time. Isn't that frustrating? Okay, God, you want me to do this, but why don't you give me the complete map to get there? He doesn't give us the complete map, map because then we try to start doing things on our own to get there. Instead of trusting God by faith each step of the way. So, okay, we get frustrated that we don't know the whole story. But we'll find peace when we learn to trust God by faith and live into the future at the pace and in the direction and on the pathway that God has provided and that God will reveal to us one step at a time. And we give thanks for it. He also, Jesus also says, he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. So Jesus is saying the role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal to us what Jesus is saying. What we need to hear. So the presence of God in the Holy Spirit with us all the time is simply telling us what Jesus desires for us to know in that moment. Are we willing to live with that kind of faith? The faith that will allow us to receive the truth in the moment and live according to that truth and take the action what God, what God is asking us to do and then trust God to reveal to us the next piece, the next word. Then Jesus reminds us that all belongs to the Father is also His. Everything of God is also of Christ and it's also of the Holy Spirit. You can't separate the three. They're one essence. They're the holy and righteous God with three parts that allow us to be able to relate to God in ways that we might understand. We don't and will never understand the fullness of God in our lives. God's so much bigger than what we and our humanists can understand. But we have the promise that through the Holy Spirit, God is always with us and will reveal to us what we need to be faithful and holy and righteous in this moment. And as we live that way, people around us will start to experience the love and grace of God through us. Because we're depending upon God 
to guide us. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So, how many of us want to hear from Jesus? We all do. Well, seek the Holy Spirit. Ask God to reveal to you, to us. Take the step of faith when God does reveal a step to us. Take it with boldness and humility, with love and with peace, because we are going where God has prepared us to go with the grace that He's given that we might bring God glory and honor and give thanks that God desired to use you to use me, that the world would be a different place through Jesus Christ. So follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ask for God to reveal the Spirit to you. Seek the knowledge of the gifts that God desires for you to have to live in the power of God for the transformation of the world through Jesus Christ. May the peace of God be with us all as we take our next step of faith as led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Now let us go into the world, being led by the Holy Spirit. As we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, discover the fullness of God's blessings and the joy that is ours when we stay close to God. Amen. Amen.